so this is my WandaVision collection. Um, so I watched WandaVision on Disney Plus and I thought it was just it started out as one of the best shows I'd ever seen. And after this point, there's going to be spoilers. So if you haven't watched WandaVision, you might want to go ahead and turn this video off and get caught up on it. But um, I will say that I wasn't very happy with the ending of the show. I think it felt very wrapped up and sort of put away and a lot of really interesting plot ideas just got um, dismissed. But the show definitely had a great beginning and a great middle. I think they just maybe got overwhelmed in the end with trying to pack in too much stuff. So I don't know. But either way, it was still really fascinating. And it's basically about how um, Scarlet Witch, Wanda, um, Maximoff is trying to cope with the death of her, of her true love, Vision, who died in the end of... Avengers um, uh, Infinity War so anyway I have this is all my stuff and the the most important part is the comic books there were two uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch comic book series one that had four issues and one that had 12 issues and I have them all here so I thought I would show you the comics some of the actual WandaVision merchandise and then some of the um, Vision and Scarlet Witch uh, merchandise that you can also get. So um, let's start with some of the the branded merchandise. These there's not very much, which is interesting, but these are little um, bag clips you can get that uh, show different uh, versions of uh, the characters, Vision and Scarlet Witch, and then they have um, uh. What, I, I can't remember her name. Photon, I think, is her name. She's actually um, uh, Captain Marvel's friend's daughter um, from the Captain Marvel movie. And I think she becomes Photon. And then we have just different scenes from them, like when they did a magic show and when they're in different eras in black and white and in color. So And, and the figures are actually really cool. I have three of them, but they're kind of hard to find. Um, and I don't want to keep buying blind bags because they're definitely not cheap. But these are really well made, I will say that. So, there's that. And it shows you what you can get. 50s Vision, 50s Wanda, 60s Wanda, 60s Vision, uh, Magician's Assistant, and Magician... Monica Rambeau, who is Photon, 70s Vision of Wanda, and then there's two exclusive ones that uh, look like, if I had to guess, this is um, Wanda and Vision in their Halloween costumes, because that's what the silhouette looks like. So next, I wanted to show you um, these, and it's funny, we, were, we started watching WandaVision, we were enjoying it, and we went to Ollie's one day. And I found the Wanda figure, and then Mary found the Vision one, and these were the only two of these um, these Age of Ultron small figures available, and it was just Wanda and Vision, which I thought was really cool. So um, they are the same scale as my Guardians of the Galaxy figures. So I can probably just display them right with these guys. And they're pretty ragged, so I'm not going to worry about them. If they're Ollie's, I don't really worry about collector value or anything. They come with a thing you can build. And if you want to. And you and they also come with Wanda's uh, power effects. And these little figures are actually pretty cool. They're pretty poseable. They're decent action figures um, and you can literally just clip these on her hands so and let's look at the and then there's this thing and I think maybe this goes here.
it's creating some kind of weird Ultron thing. It's quite heavy. Here's Vision figure. It looks like it's been opened and retaped. Okay, so Vision is also uh, really cool and detailed. His cape is textured. The metallic paint. And you can see all the uh, detailing on his head. So they look pretty good together. Okay, and this vision comes with a tank of some kind, and um, I think these are little Ultron figures that you can connect to the tank, I guess. Not exactly sure. But um, I think these all build into a final thing, which is this, well, this, and then it builds into like the sort of Voltron kind of thing in the end, if you collected all of them, which I don't think I'm going to do because this is, I really just like the Wanda and the Vision. So let's continue. Um, I have two action figures, six inch um action figures you might notice on the stands there's some Chinese writing because these are uh, ZD toys which are uh, they do have a Marvel license but they're much more affordable than Marvel Legends you can find them pretty easily on eBay and for all intents and purposes they are just as good as Marvel Legends She has a ball jointed neck. The same uh, articulation from Marvel, but the joints don't look as good. Should know. See, they they're not filled in. And there may not there is the ink articulation either way though. It, it has that good ball joint. She has her signature outfit on. And her hands are in a very uh, cool effect. And you can put her on the stand and make her look like she's floating, which is really cool. The stand is really good and durable. And you can pose it in different ways. Same with Vision. Um, he has some detailing on the cape. He might be, the color may not be perfect. He has sort of a bubble gum color rather than the deep red that um, I think he's supposed to be. But a little details like this doesn't bother you too much, then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't save a lot of money and purchase the ZD toy versions. If you just are a purist and want Marvel Legends, then by all means. But these look great and they display great. I've done some other videos about ZD toys and have shown the um, the benefits of getting these to fill out your collection for characters. I think the likeness of Paul Bettany is really good. 
But I will say that this doesn't really look like um, Elizabeth Olsen very much. But you can get these in some really good poses. And they look great next to your Marvel Legends figures. So, there you have it. Two ZD Toys WandaVision figures. Set these aside. So, I have some comics I want to show you now. First, uh, I'll just show you this. Um, True Believer, Giant Size Avengers. Uh, and it's Avengers symbol for the most long-awaited wedding of the decade. And it's Vision and Scarlet Witch getting married. And, um... Just gonna flip through some of these to show you some of the story. Now, this story isn't really connected to WandaVision with the exception that it just has the two characters. But it... I thought it was a nice addition to this collection because it's a WandaVision centric plot but there's you know Thor and a lot of the other characters in it too and then Agnes Agatha Harkness who appears in WandaVision um, she is played by um, uh, Catherine, uh, oh gosh, what's her name? Um, Catherine Hahn, who's a really, really funny actress. Um, just, I really enjoy uh, her movies. She's generally just really, really funny. So, I thought, and I was really disappointed that the Agatha Harkness story in WandaVision just seemed to have been abandoned. Because she emerged as one of the most fascinating characters of the whole show, in my opinion. So, here's the two um, Vision and Scarlet Witch series um, from the 80s. I think the first was maybe 83 and the second was in 87. There were four in the first one. Uh, Mary and I read the first four and it's really not, it didn't have a lot to do with uh, WandaVision, but there is a little, you can see a little inspiration that was taken here and there. Like it shows them moving into their neighborhood. And you can enjoy some of these old vintage ads as we go along. You can see how, and you can see the Halloween costumes. Because Halloween played a big part in WandaVision. And you get some appearances by other Avengers. And the first four issues of the first series, it's kind of all over the place. They go through all kinds of, like, e each comic really is its own little story. It's an anthology more than a story for the first four. So, um, do you remember these things? Okay, and then in the next issue... I mean, there's a, there is a bit of a story arc, but it's really like an anthology. Starcade, Saturday morning, mega fun on CBS with the Pandemonium, Bugs Bunny, Roadrunner Show, Meatballs and Spaghetti, Sylvester and Tweety, Daffy and Speedy, and the new Gilligan's Planet. See, this is what comic books looked like when I was a kid in the 80s. Uh, totally different now. You're building for real with old Lego. And then a lot of these characters will come back in the second series. 
Now, you can find, if you want to start collecting these comics, you can find the first series really easily, the first four. But the second series is going to be a little bit harder to put together. Some of them are very cheap, and some of them are not so cheap. And this, in the first series, Vision loses his arm, which is interesting. Um, and then this also ends with the revelation that Scarlet Witch and um, Quicksilver's father was Magneto. And they were delivered by this um, Bovo, who was their... Um, Midwife, um, and which is interesting because there's reference to that in WandaVision, the show. Dungeons and Dragons. And then the moon base where Quicksilver lives. And this iteration, Quicksilver is not dead, but he's alive and married with a kid. And in WandaVision, there is a great surprise when it comes to Quicksilver. If you're an overall Marvel and X-Men fan, the Dark Crystal, um, that you would probably appreciate. That they also, unfortunately, didn't do much with in the end I, like I said the ending was just very disappointing but the show built up to what should have been a great ending I almost feel like they should have had a whole other season so now we get to the 12 parter these are a little bit harder to acquire a little bit more recent um, this is the one that is more of an inspiration for WandaVision The Heavenly Kid. I saw that movie. Hawkeye. Vision is always punching his hand through something and hurting himself. <laughs> Seems to be a recurrent theme. And this kind of thing, when these comics came out, they were these were not super, these were not apex heroes. I mean, Iron Man wasn't. I mean, Marvel was Captain America and Spider Man, that was, and the Hulk. And then it was it really wasn't until the Robert Downey Jr. movie that Iron Man and all these other characters became so big. But for years and years and years, when you thought of Marvel, you thought of Spider Man, you thought of Captain America, mostly Spider Man. And uh, that's it's no coincidence. It's and Fantastic Four actually was actually bigger than Iron Man and and um, number two. So it's funny. And if you think about it, the movies that were made first were Spider Man and Fantastic Four, and then Hulk, because they were trying to make and they had originally made a Captain America back in the uh, '90s with. Um, Believe it or not, the son of the author of uh, Catcher in the Rye. Now, I'm not going to show you every comic in this. Um, but I'll show you some of them. It's number three. And now, here we get into some real uh, inspiration of the TV show. This scene was in the show.
Look at this. Look at this group. Spider-Man, Mr. T, the Smurfs, um, I, Silver Surfer maybe, um, those, oh gosh, my wife would know what these are, um, Punky Brewster, the Chickmunks, um, oh, man, uh, Kid Video, Snorks, Gummy Bears, Spider-Man's Amazing Friends and One to Grow On, which was like a public service thing that they had in the 80s. Hulk Hogan, along with the Berenstein Bears, the Wuzzles, the Young Astronauts, and Muppet Babies, and Monsters. And here's a little mini cartoon. Not a text page or vamping until your letters pour in. So, and a lot of times when they did those little ash can thingy, they were um, a different comic. So it was kind of neat to see it in WandaVision. Mutant Romance. Mask, I used to collect those. Charleston Shoe, all the, the chewy sugar candies. All the different Newtons. I mean, you can only really, really find the fig ones now. The Magic Show. This was another big part of uh, WandaVision. So, um, there's a lot of comic book inspiration for that show. So, if you want the backstory, Agatha Harkness again. If you want the backstory, you would want to get these comics. More Halloween. In the Land of the Dead. It's Halloween. Halloween was a big part of WandaVision. Glamour and Illusion was their magic act, and it's a, another big part of the show. That's what they called themselves in the show. And this is this is just like the show here, with some differences, but you'll see the inspiration. More Agatha. Number six. Like I said, this is what Marvel was <laughs> in the 80s. These four guys. It had there was no Iron Man or Thor. I mean they existed, but they weren't popular. Vision, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Nick Fury, they were just not as, um, they were not the popular characters. They were not the ones that sold comics. In fact, that's why these characters would make cameos in these comics, just to get people to read the stories. There's Doctor Strange. He, They made a Doctor Strange movie in the 70s. It was a made-for-TV movie. This was more along the lines of X-Men. And the thing is, is Marvel and X-Men are owned by the Marvel heroes we from the movies and the X-Men heroes from the other movies are owned by two different studios, so they don't really intermingle very much. We got the Mariner, Submariner and 
who was actually, along with Captain America, the first two Marvel characters ever. Uh, I think maybe the Human Torch at Submariner and then Captain America. I have that one. Condor. Carambo. That's Power Man or um, uh, Luke Cage. Not Nick Cage. I think Nick Cage named himself Nick Cage after Luke Cage. Because he's a comic book fan. Because his real name is Nick Coppola. When I was a kid, he was Power Man. Care Bears. You know, the Care Bears and Strawberry Shortcake started out as greeting card characters. Then they turned into figurines. Then they became cartoons and toys and all that stuff. A little tidbit there. The Enchantress. There's an Enchantress in DC, too. There's always been a little overlap between Marvel and DC characters. more magic shows they really play a big part in WandaVision. Halloween and magic and hexagons all play a big part of WandaVision. She's pregnant. Look at that. Star Wars droids. Powerback and the Amazing Spider-Man with tips on ways to prevent sexual abuse. It's interesting. Uh, I'm going to skip one and move to this one. I, this one's interesting because um, I actually got this in one of my mystery packs. You might remember if you watch my videos. So this was free for me. I don't know, kind of. It was a, just a few pennies. And it goes for a lot more. It's worth a lot more. And I have two of these. And I can keep one in plastic. And the spectacular Spider-Man. So as you can see in the WandaVision comic series, all kinds of Marvel characters would make guest appearances to just make them more um, interesting. That might be Rhino. And Wanda is going to give birth to two new characters. The Stan Lee when he was young. And the final issue, number 12, is the most valuable one uh, because it is the birth and the revelation of two new characters that you'll see if you watch WandaVision. 
and that I'm keeping this in plastic. Um, this is the hardest one to get. And um, so that is, is all these comics and these bag clips, these small figures. and the larger figures is my WandaVision collection. So I highly recommend this show, especially for the first few episodes, the, I might say all, but the last episode are brilliant. And I'm hoping that they will make a second season or maybe tie it into like Falcon Winter Soldier or something. Cause I want to see what happens in the story or things that should have happened. And I hope you enjoyed this video until next time. Bye.